This is Hawaii, and he is a peregrine falcon. Now, I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with peregrine falcons because they are superlative birds, as I like to say. There's a lot about them that is the best or the most, and Hawaii certainly lives up to that. One thing about peregrine falcons that is the best or the most is that they are one of the most widely distributed raptors on the planet. This means you could go to all six continents, excluding Antarctica, and see peregrine falcons in the wild. They are everywhere. And that's because their habitat requirements aren't anything specifically about, uh, oh, I need this type of forest or, oh, I need this type of wetland. Instead, it's more, I need space. I need big, wide open spaces so I can do my particular style of hunting. Their particular style of hunting is another one of the things that makes them really, really superlative, extra special. This is, of course, as Jesse said, the fastest animal on the planet. Not Hawaii as an individual, but his species are renowned for the high speeds at which they can dive to catch their prey. Unlike our broadwing hawk, who's more of an ambush predator, more of a sit and wait till something comes too close and then grab it kind of guy, peregrine falcons, like the other falcons in their family, are much more active predators. So they tend to fly out and seek out something that's in the air with them. Now for a peregrine like him, it could be a flock of pigeons, for example or a flock of starlings, some other sort of cliff nesting bird, as peregrine falcons do find themselves nesting on cliffs or sheer structures. Buddy, oh no. This is what happens when the Pez dispenser runs out. We'll see how we do. <laughs> so they're traveling along looking for these large flocks of birds. And when they find one, what they're going to do is fly on top of it, get above the flock of birds, and then leap down, dive down into the fray, folding their wings in close to their body so that they look kind of like a torpedo and just drop like a stone. Now, the interesting thing about this dive or this stoop is that they're not just falling. If they were just falling, their terminal velocity would eventually slow them down, right? The um, air that was pushing back against their body would overcome the uh, weight of their body being pulled down toward the planet at about 180 miles per hour. But we know that peregrine falcons can go faster than that. In fact, they've been clocked diving at speeds of close to 240 miles per hour, which is crazy fast. I like to say that even if I, no matter how hard I push the gas pedal on my little Subaru, it's not going to go 240 miles per hour. And yet this animal does it on his own with his own body. So a lot of a peregrine falcon's adaptations are about them being able to build up to those high speeds and then maintain them and survive. He has specially adapted eyelids and the tears that coat his eyes are jelly-like and viscous to keep his eyes moist while the air is rushing past him. He also has adaptations in his nostrils all the way up there in his nose to ensure that he can breathe while he is falling through the air at 240 miles per hour. But the most noticeable part of a peregrine falcon's anatomy is, of course, the long pointed wings. Hawaii likes to hold his out so you can see his very, very long pointed wings there. And those are really the wings of a jet fighter. Those are the wings of an animal that's capable of slipping in and out between gusts and eddies, of making quick, tight turns on a dime, adapting to how fast his prey is moving around him. So not only can he dive quickly through that cloud of starlings or pigeons, but if one of them breaks away from the group, he can make chase and he can keep up with each of that bird's twists and turns. Now, pigeons are no slouches. Pigeons also have really long pointed wings because they've been in an evolutionary arms race with the peregrine falcon for millions of years. But the peregrine falcons ultimately can go out and can branch out beyond pigeons as well. In fact, it's been documented peregrine falcons eating about 60% of bird species on our planet. Not one single peregrine falcon, but peregrine falcons as a whole, six out of every 10 bird species on our planet are at one time or another prey to a peregrine falcon. So they're very, very efficient with their job. Now, I got to say, the last kind of superlative thing about the peregrine falcon is that they're one of our greatest conservation success stories. 
One thing that happened to the peregrines almost 50 years ago now is that they nearly went extinct in the eastern half of the United States. Back then, we were using a pesticide chemical called DDT, spraying it around on our crops to keep the bugs off of our crops, but it found its way up the food chain and into the peregrine falcons. They caused them to not be able to lay eggs that were healthy, and so there were no new baby peregrines joining the population for many decades. Fortunately, people noticed this. This very charismatic bird was slowly, slowly going extinct, and they banded together with falconers, other people who cared about uh, the fate of the peregrine falcon, to breed these birds in captivity, to reintroduce them to the wild, and it's been a great success. Here in Vermont, we have about 45 or 50 breeding pairs of peregrine falcons, where in 1989, there was one. So it's been a tremendous success. Now, Hawaii himself is not from Vermont. He's from Hawaii. And he is probably one of only a handful of peregrine falcons that have ever been to Hawaii. Much like our broadwing hawk, these birds do not often cross open water, much less the entirety of the Pacific Ocean. In addition, Hawaii is also a um, uh, subspecies of peregrine falcon that we know breeds in the Arctic tundra. His story, so far as we know, was that he was born in northern Alaska. He started his very first migration southward and ended up probably getting blown out to sea on a storm a little bit. He probably wasn't blown as far as the Hawaiian Islands. What we think happened, because this happens with other birds that you see sometimes on the news, is that he caught a ride on a tanker ship, perhaps, that was going to Honolulu. He rode it all the way there. And we joke that he was so excited for his Hawaiian vacation that he flew face first into a brick wall. That was where he was found by the kind person who brought him to the veterinarians at the Honolulu Zoo, where they discovered that he had broken off the top part of his beak. You might have noticed he has a little bulldog kind of face, um, and that is because when he was a young bird, he broke his beak flying into a wall. Unfortunately, that's never going to grow back, and it's a vital part of the way that he processes his food. He can catch a pigeon, no problem, but if he can't tear it up into bite-sized pieces, he's not got anything to eat. So he became an education ambassador, and he joined our team uh, in 2017. This year, though, he is 17 years old, which is kind of up there for a peregrine falcon. So we're so glad to have him as part of our team.